YouTube. I'm Charlie. This is House Call Auto Repair, and today we're heading back to Belcher Town. We're going to be replacing a front caliper. I can't remember if it was the driver's side or passenger side. Uh, front caliper on a Nissan Maxima. And if you guys have uh, already seen this, uh, back in October, I did a uh, video replacing brakes and what not, typical salt belt uh, brake job. Uh, seems that the uh, caliper has developed a leak and has got a number on the finish on the wheel. We're going to go out today, we're going to clean up the wheel a little bit, we're going to replace that caliper or something quick and simple. on the scene and oh that's all right there's yucky all of the finish is beaded right up off the inside of the rim but we're gonna be going in here and replacing that caliper all right well get yourself set up for doing the job get your jack and your tools laid out and Get ready to get in here, take the wheel off, start off with the screwdriver. Get in here and pop the cap off. And we got the uh, locking lug nut to deal with. Let's see, you got the key and the 21 millimeter. And we'll go ahead and get this jacked up and get that wheel off. All your lug nuts loosened up. Remove the locking lug nut. Those together and jack the car up. Place your jack stand underneath the car. And then let it down. tire in place. And then put the tire underneath the car. And turn the wheel all the way to this side. Break 
fluid all over the outside of it. I grab the uh, needle and those pliers, pinch this, and take the caliper off. I'll hold the brake line down. Let's grab a pet trainer. We don't make a huge mess. And yeah, I'm cheap. I keep reusing the same old pet trainers over and over and over again. But you won't lose any parts this way. Let's see, grab something else to weight down the other side. Lug nuts. Use one already. Oh, there it is. Underneath the pet trainer. Alrighty. Calipers are already kind of loose. We're going to leave it right there for the moment. Somebody's not driving around with it. All right. Small pair of needle nose vice grips. Some fuel line rubber hose over the end of it. And just get down here. Clamp it down. You don't want it so tight that you have to squeeze hard to close the vice grips. But you want them to close little bit of pressure like that that way there you don't damage the line and you don't have fluid leaking out and let's see that's a 12 millimeter yep oh and that was loose we might not have to replace the caliper after all let's get this caliper off and inspect the boot first Put that screwdriver in here. See if we can get that piston in the back off just a little bit. Let's get some brake cleaner, spray that down, and we'll be able to tell for sure. See if I can get you guys to see this on camera. I'm gonna push the piston out a couple of pedal pumps, see what happens. I see, I think we can do maybe three more pumps. Let's 
sprayed it down really good because we want to get as much brake fluid off of it as possible. That way there, if we do have a leak anywhere, we'll be able to tell for sure. Let this sit like this and dry for a little while. Here's another little quick pointer for you too. When you're opening up brake fluid, punch a tiny little hole on one side. On the other side, make a bigger hole. And now you'll be able to pour this with control without it going glug, 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 glug. So we're going to go top off the brake fluid, make sure that we don't have any ser serious problems. All right, it's now so that we don't lose any brake fluid out of the system. We're going to clamp it again. And disconnect this nut. Gently set that down. And the piston just fell out. So, there's the piston, you know, all the rust around the top of it. That's the reason why this thing was leaking. It was probably doing all of its leaking right in. Oh, wow, that's pretty rough. So, this is why we're going to be replacing this caliper today. Well, they don't normally give you a new bolt with the caliper. I usually just put a plug in it, but take the bolt and washer out. We got a brand new one to go in. Make sure both of the surfaces on this are nice and clean. And then we can go ahead and put the uh, hook, the, hook the new caliper up to it. Now let's see how well I can demonstrate this. So this is the inside of your piston bore, which you can see down in there is and not too bad and this right here is your seal that holds the brake fluid back against the piston and you got a little bit more metal and then you got this outer piece right here which is called your piston boot just to show you what the what this is all about and somewhere along in here there's probably a little bit of damage the uh, piston all cleaned up but so you got that really, really thick rust right here. That's what's causing all the problems. Especially probably right in here. So that's why we're replacing this today. And start putting that new one on. Little tight quarters here. All right, we're going to take this bolt out. And try to not drop those washers on the ground or get them dirty. Take the caliper. Set the caliper over the brake pads, which I've already put back in place. Remember, these have got the little wings, wing springs at the top. Push your pads back out. Make sure that they move. If they don't, take your caliper bracket off. Clean it up. Clean your hardware. But make sure that your brake pads move freely. Place your caliper over your pads. Line it up. Put your caliper bolts in. Tighten these down right now so we don't forget them. Forgetting them can be a very bad thing. So 14 millimeter. And just because they're here, use the double wrench method. Nice and snug. Nice and snug. In this case, I'm using the wrench as a handle. Still brake fluid everywhere from that blowing out. Okay, now we'll take the hose, put the hose in, whoops, where's that bolt? Take the bolt, pull one washer off, and take the bolt, slide it in from behind, put your other washer on, and then insert it into the caliper, lining up your hose. Uh, 
got that bolt all the way down in. And you remember these are copper crush washers. Means you're gonna be tightening these things down enough to crush the washer, but you don't want to strip or break the bolt, which in this case is a weird size. It's not the uh, 12 millimeter that we took out. This one's more like 11, something bizarre like that. Somewhere around in here, I have an 11 millimeter socket, six point, and that's what it is. Tighten that down nice and tight. I don't know what the spark torque spec is, but if you guys know what it is, feel free to put it in the comments. And then go ahead and release your hose clamp. Put that away. Now we gotta open up the bleed screw, which is 10 millimeter, I believe. Uh, let's my 10. Oh, 10. And we're gonna let it gravity bleed. I'll show you a little trick with the gravity bleed to help get the rest of the air out. that about finger tight and then you can put some pressure in on the pedal now what you'll find what you'll find happens is when you've got this just finger, just bottomed out, but not really tight, just by finger, you push the brake pedal down, the brake pedal will go down nice and easy, pushing the air out. As soon as the liquid, the brake fluid starts getting to this, then you'll start feeling the resistance in the brake pedal again. So you can tell whether or not your caliper's full from inside the car. Now I'll go ahead and loosen it up a little bit more, get the fluid flowing out of it, and just lightly tap on the caliper with a hammer and what it'll do is it'll start making all of the air bubbles that are stuck on the inside of this break loose, float to the top. So we'll uh, zoom you guys right in on this. Now you got zoomed away in. You see the fluid dripping off of here. I can drip off my finger, there we go. And I just tap. see any more air bubbles coming out of there so I'd say that that's pretty safe to call it bled go ahead and tighten that down and then go test the brake pedal guys don't know by now how to put a wheel on but we're gonna put that wheel back on and actually I think maybe it'll be a little nice and we'll clean some of this up first back up on here now. I got just wiped it down, got some of the crap off of it. And from the looks of things, this rim used to have a black finish on it and somebody just spray bombed it. And all of the paint got dissolved by the leaky brake fluid. Now we'll find all the lug nuts. I take the locking lug nut and put it directly across from the valve stem. No specific reason other than just OCD and I like putting it there and get the rest of your lug nuts started.
banging on the wheel helps to center everything. They're all torqued, crisscross pattern. Give the owner back his security key. Put your center cap back on. Look around the cap for a picture of a valve stem, which in this case I do not see. Not that there isn't one, I'm just that blind. Uh, but you will note that one of these is curved when all the rest of them are not. Uh, and we've got three little fingers right here. There's got to be a square notch. No, no square notch. Okay, so in this case, I'm just going to put this one here over the locking lug nut. And there you have it. Jack it up, get out the jack stand from underneath it. And lower your jack down. Now for a quick rip. If you guys found this one helpful, feel free to like, comment, don't forget to comment, and subscribe. And we'll catch you on the next one. And don't forget, you got no more excuses pick up those wrenches. Now I'll do this one just for some bonus footage. We're going to take this caliper piston and try to push it back in. And what you're going to find is that when you try to do this, you're not going to be able to access this back here to lift it up around this. So you want to grab a pick or a small screwdriver in this case. Get underneath the edge, lift up on it, and then push the piston down in. And then slowly, this is where picks come in really handy. You want to get this up around the piston all the way around. And I'm going to need a pick because I can't get underneath. Maybe I can. Grab this edge. trying to put on a nitrile rubber glove. Yep. Whatever it takes to get that boot all the way up around the piston. In this case I managed to get it in all the way around and then you just push the piston back down in or no brake fluid in there it should go back in relatively easily so we can send it back to the parts store for core or you can just junk it I'm not sure which and oh yeah this little rubber piece right here pop that off if it'll come off my fingers are all slippery now from the brake fluid 
and this is rusted on there to boot. Get this piece off. Uh, sometimes you put a little bit of grease in it or something like that, but transfer it over to your new bleeder, put your wheel back on, and that's how you replace the caliper. I think I can verifiably say that piston is stuck. I can't even get it to pump out. Oh, wait a minute. That probably help if I, I release this. So now you guys be able to see that piston move. 